Hello, welcome to our seminar on soybean seeding rates and planting dates. As complicated as farming has gotten in the last 20 years, there's still some basic questions that every farmer needs an answer for, and that's how thick to plant it and when to plant it. And we're gonna, those, those, the answers to those can matter a great deal to your profitability to those two questions. Just by introduction, my name is Scott Nelson. I'm an agronomist with Iowa Soybeans Research Center for Farming Innovation. To set up our studies of what we did, our problem was we wanted to determine the partial returns for various soybean seeding rates so that farmers can, can seed in an optimal rate and make the most money for their investment. The second objective of our study was to develop guidance on which data layers to use for variable rate seeding in soybeans. And we'll update you later on that guidance. We're still doing some, some uh, high level analysis to understand that. If you look on the right is a picture of how our studies were laid out. We had an optional 80,000 seeds per acre that the farmer seeded, or we had 100,000, 130, and 160,000 seed drop per acre that we compared in full length strips across the farm. The reason we wanted these large farm plots is so we could understand how soybean seeding rates respond to different soils and terrain attributes. And that would go in, and that knowledge would help us feed into how to create variable rate seed, better variable rate seeding recommendations. We had 12 locations across three years in the data set that I'm going to show you. This slide shows our results, and I'm going to set this up for you here in a second. By partial return, what I mean is the yield times the price per bushel minus the seeding cost. So this is an estimate. What I'm showing you here is results from our seeding rate studies across the 12 locations calculated as a partial return on your investment. I use $12.5 per bushel as, a, as the price, knowing that it's trading over $14 as, as we record this. Now I also have the cost per seed, per the cost per unit of seed factored into this graph. So if you if you're paying relatively if you got a good deal on seed and you're paying $40 a unit, $50 a unit, $60 a unit, or $70 a unit. And of course I know some of you are paying uh, even higher than this if you're using a high level seed treatment. What I want you to notice is is on the $40 um, $40 bag and $50 bag seed treat uh, uh, unit cost that 130,000 gave you the highest partial return on your investment for seeding rate. As you got into more expensive seed, if you look at 60,000 and 70 or $60 bag seed and $70 bag seed, you can see that between 100 and 130,000 seed drop was the most profitable. What I want you to also notice is that at 160,000 seeds per acre, it was not prof it was not the most profitable at, at any seed price in our studies. This is a just an example of a single trial that I thought would be interesting to you. This was a, a, a trial where the farmer flat rate here, I'm showing you yield on the y-axis. He flat rate seeded 100,000, 130, and 160,000. And then he compared that to his VRS recommendation. Now this was planted in mid-June, so the yield levels are depressed. But what I thought was interesting was that his variable rate seeding recommendation gave him the highest yield. And that in his recommendation, he was increasing his population on the less productive ground and decreasing his populations on his most productive soil. And in this case, he saw an advantage over flat rate seeding. What I also thought was interesting is, is a lot of times people will tend to recommend that if you get into a late planted scenario that you increase your population dramatically to accumulate more light. Well, in this study, that wasn't necessarily true, but we'll need more data under late planting dates to really understand this phenomenon. We did have one farmer, he was so proud of this trial that I had to show it to you. Uh, he had a seeding rate of 60,000 seeds per acre and he raised 80 bushels. And um, I, I wanna caution you, while this is a great success and we do hear examples of this from time to time, 
as a general trend, a, a lot has to go right if you're going to seed at that low seeding rate. You can't have any hail damage or any crusting injury or any herbicide injury, or you'll, or you'll fall off the yield plateau very fast if you drop much below 60,000 plants per acre. So our research recommendations are for seeding rates and soybeans are your least risky seeding rate is between 130 and 140,000 seeds per acre. That gives you enough plants that if you have a hail event if, or if you uh, have crusting or herbicide injury that you'll have enough plants to be able to optimize yield. We, we recommend you shoot for a target stand of 100 to 120,000 plants per acre. Now, as seed costs increase, returns for lower seeding rate do increase. And in those cases where you're planning with a high level seed treatment, you can uh, optimize your profitability by lowering your seeding rates. But we would recommend that you do that with a planter. And in our studies, we see a trend where um, soybean seeding rates, we, we can give we can get higher yields with lower seeding rates when, when planted with a soybean planter versus a drill. And that's because with a soybean planter, you get better seed placement and more equidistant spacing in your, in your crop versus that what you get with a drill, which, which doesn't always give you the best spacing and seed placement. And finally, just to say, we need more data, especially on soybean seeding rates below 100,000. And if you want to cooperate with us, we would, we would love to work with you. I'm going to switch gears now and talk about our planting date studies. And our, our question was, is we were interested in determining the value of a late soybeans planted early. And so in our on-farm trials, what we did is we set up uh, trials where we had a normal relative maturity for the area. And by early planting, I mean during the corn planting window. We planted that same normal variety, late planted, and by late planted, I mean in the soybean window. Then we used a later RM of 0.5 to 0.8 RM difference, uh, longer day than the normal RM. And we planted that at the same time in the early corn planting window. And then the later RM we planted at the late planting window or, or the soybean window. We had 20 locations of these trials from 2019 to 2020. So I'm gonna show you the, first of all, the results over all 20 locations, but I am gonna to mention to you that years differed in their responses. And I'm gonna show that as well to you. What I first wanna draw your attention to is is that the, the, the plots in green. In the darker green, the normal RM early planting during the corn window was three bushels higher yielding than the normal RM planted during the soybean planting window. In the blue plots is the later RM early planted date is the darker blue. And notice that that was two bushels higher than the normal RM during the early planting day. And it was one bushel higher than the later RM during the late planting day. So there was a trend in our studies for, for later soybeans yielding more than the, than the normal RM. Now I know a lot of good agronomists and seedsmen will, and farmers will argue with me that saying sometimes the earlier RMs within their region do better than the later RMs. But I'm just showing you what our data says. So you know, local differences are, are going to be important in this. Now, if I break out the responses by year, it, it, you get to see a very interesting trend here. So for 2019, what I want you to notice is the green plots are the normal RM. And again, you see a three bushel yield advantage for the, for the planting in the normal corn window versus the uh, normal soybean window. Now in 2019, where we planted a later RM, that's 0.5 to 0.8, um, RM longer, you can see that there was a substantially higher yield advantage for the later RM versus the, er, no, the normal RM under the early planting date. And the later RM under the late planting date was just slightly above the normal RM under the late planting date. Now 2020 was a very different year in that we had a very dry summer. We had a good planting season 
um, but we had a very dry summer and, and that interacted with our results. So what I first wanna draw your attention to is that in 2020, there was a four bushel yield advantage for the normal RM planted in the corn window versus the normal RM planted in the soybean window. In, the, in 2020, the later RM under the early planting date did not beat the normal RM under the early planting date. But for what, because of, of environmental influences, the later RM late planting date or the later RM planted in the soybean window was the highest yielding plot. Now, what we think happened is um, we had a lot of rate, late rains in, uh, in September, the, uh, the most of the season was very dry. What we think is that the normal RM early planted date and the late RM early planted date had mostly matured by the time that these rains occurred and they were not able to utilize that extra moisture to fill out or to flex. Whereas the later RM under the later planting date those soybeans were, were able to utilize that extra moisture and, and flax and give us bigger, bigger seed. We think this is just kind of an anomaly, but we'll continue testing another year to see if this is true. So our comments and recommendations. And I forgot to mention that harvest moistures for the late RM and the early RM soybeans were about very, very equal. And this tells us that something interesting about soybeans and that the RMs differ by flowering. An earlier RM will, will flower differently than a later RM, but it seems that they, they tend to mature about the same time if you aren't varying your RMs uh, greatly. You know, when you're at, at 0.5 to 0.8 difference in RM, you're gonna mature about the same time as the earlier RM. Like I say, we saw between a two to push four bushel advantage for late for a planting a later RM soybean during the normal corn planting window. We saw also a two to four bushel advantage for early planting date of the normal RM versus versus the the later planting date of that same RM. So finally, we recommend that farmers plant at least some of their soybeans during the normal corn planting window to optimize their production and and profitability. Thank you so much for listening and have a good day.